Hey guys, so it's here bringing you the extra video of the day and today we are doing another episode of Huzzy Spectates and today we are spectating Solo Beverly uh, who is a bronze something. We'll have a look in a second at the loading screen but just to mention because uh, a couple of people get the different thing. Uh, this series it changes depending what we're spectating. So for example today it'll be a bronze Darius, a diamond player spectates a bronze. It's not always going to be that, that we've got around 10 to 15 people now in the series, that they range, some people are diamond, and some people are platinum, gold, bronze, silver, it's every rating of the game, and um, you're going to get different lessons from each episode, is like I mentioned in the past, is I don't mention every single mistake when it's a bronze game, because there's no point. But when I spectate, I think we've got an upcoming episode with a guy that's in Diamond. I will be mentioning very small mistakes because it means a lot more there. And that's the idea. Uh, now, again, before we get into it, just thought I'd mention again how you get into this series. Because it does seem that people kind of ignore what I'm saying. Is in the description of this video, there is an explanation. You either have to be a tier 3 Twitch subscriber or there is a Patreon tier that I currently think is full. Uh, I can't do random replays here and there when people are supporting the channel. Um, so, like, when people are emailing my business email, it's not going to happen, uh, unfortunately. So, I've got a lot of replays to do. And it's cool that people kind of want this. And again, like I said, this is kind of my coaching, right? So, this is my coaching time for specific people that kind of want to get some stuff pointed out to them. Um, so we're going to be spectating a Darius versus a Nasus in particular, which is good because Darius being one of my better champions. But let's just have a quick look at the loading screen. So again, whenever I get replays, I do ask the people if they can provide me with this. I'm thankful. Um, but this is a ranked. It's Solo Beverly on North America. You can see it's a low bronze game. Uh, so there's a bronze for Soraka, bronze for Vayne, who is 1 and 7 high deaths, bronze for Akali, die in the jungle, against a, and the Darius himself is against a bronze 5 Nasus. Um, so yeah, a very low bronze game. So there is going to be a lot of mistakes. I know last time I did a bronze game, people going, oh, maybe bronze is a bit too low rating. I'll collect your feedback on that in this episode. If you guys think bronze may be a little bit too low rating, let me know. Uh, I personally don't think it is because technically bronze is the second biggest um, rating in the game. Silver being the biggest, then bronze. And uh, we'll go into it. So today we're probably going to be focusing quite a lot on what the Darius is specifically doing. And let's get going so there are some bugs with the spectate uh client just to kind of point that out people have said all the time oh the the you pause the video but the re um the ultimate cooldown is still ticking yeah there, there's some bugs uh with the client unfortunately it's just the way that it's gonna go let's just speed up the game though before anything akali is well there's an invade happening by my team apparently don't know if the enemy team know about it i don't think they do but they're going for the red buff Zigzus has just left the base right now but if they're stealing it, I guess that's okay. Uh, by the enemy, like again, we, this is a little bit weird because we're seeing enemy pings. There was somebody on the enemy team pinging there. So I'm guessing somebody wasn't here or AFK as well. So they're looking to steal the red buff. Now again, this is very low bronze. So my question would be, why are they looking to steal this? What's the reasoning? And all that's everything in between. Uh, Akali, her positioning is a little bit weird for being mid lane. You know, usually you wouldn't see a mid lane around here at 1 minute 30. But yeah, I think they're just going to steal it. Darius at this point isn't giving away where he is in the lane. And boom, mid laners are there. They're stealing the red buff and we have no vision of anybody on the map right now. So again, I only show the vision basically where we are. I don't know what Darius is doing right now. Okay, so let me just pause it and just kind of um, talk about this quickly. You're a Darius versus a Nasus. You have such a massive advantage in the early game that you really need to use. So getting an early XP lead is a really big thing. Is your bot lane and that is already stealing this. You now have vision of Soraka. Why are you going to confirm that they're starting blue? You know they're starting blue. Like I'd say there is a 95% chance they're on here and you should know that. You do not need to confirm and there we go. So Darius is looking to mess them up. I don't really know why they have a smite. You know, th to me this is just a complete waste of time ruining that early XP lead. You know, three minions are now gone. Three minions. Nasus was going to miss that XP anyway, and you could have simply gained. Now, it's four minions that are gone. So that, to me, already is just very questionable. This is obviously the first time that Solar Beverly has played Darius in ranks, but that, that's not a Darius thing. That was just a decision-making thing. So, I yeah, that, that was just a bit weird. Um, all right, so now he should be going all in. Okay, so... Mm, took e level 
2. Not bad. You could have took W, but you used E when he was actually on top of you. Now, again, that is obviously a very basic mistake, and some people go, there's no point pointing out, but I may as well. It's a mistake. Um, so focus on the last hitting. Push Nasus into tower is going to do two, one of two things. One, it's going to make him lose last hits because he has to compete with the tower. Or secondly, it's going to force him to tank last hits, therefore using his health and all that good stuff. So yeah, Darius is 7 to 1 last hits right now. But this could be even more. I just want to point that out. This could be 11 or 12 CS to 1. Um, so that's just, it's worth noting because every little thing, every little advantage makes the difference. Um, Huzzy Cannon. Uh, but yeah, that's basically just the early game. Is there's a lot of that could have been a lot different there. So uh, yeah, matchup in mid lane. Just to point out, I would expect. Uh, well, if you're basing it off champions, Ziggs should pretty much always win this matchup. But if you're basing it off bronze five, bronze four, Akali probably will, because uh, she's a champion that a lot of lower rated people think is OP, but is really not. Um, you just have to control her, and Ziggs is very good at that. Okay, Vision straight away. No reaction yet from Darius at all. You know where Diana is. Okay, now he re reacts, okay. Very, very heavy mana usage already from um, Darius there. Now you can see Diana coming in to potentially have a gank, but not really going all in for it. And obviously, Volibear has had three buffs, so he's going for... So he did this, this, and now red, and now he's doing this, okay. Bit of a weird jungle path, but I guess it's okay. Bot lane, I'd expect Caitlyn to have an advantage uh, over a Vayne, especially in this rating. I don't really get why people would play Vayne in like Bronze 5 and stuff. Don't overcomplicate things. People in Diamond can hardly play Vayne. So I wouldn't like Caitlyn to me as a perfect AD carry for lower ranks because she's very basic. Very easy to play. Nothing crazy out of the ordinary. Okay, so just to kind of point out, every single time that uh, Darius is going for a trade, notice how they're kind of going even. The reason that they're kind of going even is because minions exist. You can't ignore minions. Minions do more damage to you in early game than any other time. So you really can't ignore them. They, they will hurt you, especially if you're going in the middle with also a cannon. And that makes your trades less efficient. Obviously, Nasus doesn't have any pressure. But still, it's just worth pointing out that you have to be a little bit careful when it comes to minions. Uh, obviously, yeah, the Nasus is missing Qs and that, which isn't good. Mid lane, there was a 2v2. I think both teams just survive and back out. So, so far, not terrible. Darius is standing on vision right now. Like, that is enemy vision. So, I don't really know what he's doing. Because uh, the enemy team exactly know where he is. But lane's going to continue applying pressure. What I'd want to see from Sona is potentially actually be there. Again, that is the biggest thing that I see from lower ranking supports. Is that they can, they kind of think that they don't have to do anything. Uh, again, like I mentioned to you guys, the reason why I don't get autofilled a lot in higher rating is because there are a lot of support mains. The reason why there are a lot of support mains in high rating is because the supports that actually have an impact and know what they're doing get to diamond very easily. I right, say, so, okay, so again, decision making from the Darius has, al has already not been good, you know, going here at level one and that. The t decision making of going for this invade, where's the, de the decision making? You're walking into the enemy jungle. When your jungle is the other side of the map, when your mid laner has got no mana and also is most likely not going to come help, and you're walking in with a Nasus also being able to come, very, very questionable decision making. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, again, the E wasn't needed at that point. So he probably will get a kill on Diana, maybe with the dot. Probably didn't need the flash, does get first blood. Potentially will actually win a 2v1 at this stage. Uh, again, usually you probably wouldn't win a 2v1 in this in this instance. He actually is probably going to get a double kill. Yep, and also attack. Boom, double kill. So that is more the enemy making a mistake than the Darius doing it well. But still, you got to give him props for doing a nice double kill, which is always really good. Um, but yeah, nice double kill. Going to snowball this lane most likely, um, which is really good. So queue it, auto attack it all, push it into the tower. Force Nasus to teleport onto the tower. You go back and buy. Use all that gold that you have. And you're just snowballing as a good. And you're snowballing as a Darius. And potentially just probably going to win the game by yourself. Bot lane. Uh, worth it. But Caitlyn gets a kill on the Vayne. Vayne kills Sona. But Caitlyn stays alive. Which means she continues to farm. Which is really good. Now what I'd want to see from the Darius is actually, yes, pushing this as quick as you possibly can. Because if I'm not mistaken, uh, Darius... Okay, apparently the keybind doesn't want to work for swapping over to gold for some reason. I have no idea why. Maybe it broke. 
Again, there are some bugs in the client, but I, I'd expect the Darius... I don't know why that's not working. I'd expect the Darius to have a lot of gold. Uh, let me just quickly... Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. Uh, I don't know where it is. A eh? well that works. Um, I have no idea. Weird. Usually X is the button that you press for it to swap to the gold menu, but apparently not. Okay, so item build for the Darius himself is going for the Triforce Sheen build. Perfectly fine. Uh, again, I uh, I actually love... Okay, Volibear, meanwhile, is invading by himself again. A lot of solo invades. A lot of solo invades that we've seen in this game already. Uh, questionable. You know, really, really questionable. There has to be a reason for why you're invading. Sona going all in by herself now, too. In the middle of Akali. Randomly, the Akali took the red. She gets the kill. Ziggs is zoomed because he hasn't gone back yet. He's probably going to die as well. He does get the flash. He probably will end up surviving. But a lot of questionable stuff. Darius going for a trade on the Nasus. Tanking all those minions, which makes it a negative trade. Gotta be careful of the man. He's still tanking some of the minions right now, by the way. Uh, you can't ignore this. This is a lot of gold. Like, what you have to understand, just really quickly. Like, add a couple more. But one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, there's about roughly 10 to 12 last hits here. That is nearly a kill worth of gold. Like, nearly. So if you are going for a trade on Nasus that isn't a kill and you lose a lot of this last hits, you've basically just lost a kill worth of gold. Remember, 16 minions is a kill. It's 300 gold. That's a kill. So never ignore your minions. Like, really don't. That's what one big thing that with the Climb to Master series is because of Unranked of Diamond, generally my play gets a bit lazier myself. When I'm playing with higher rated people and we're climbing on my main account... I'm going to have to very much focus more on last hits, which I didn't really need to do in Unranked Diamond. But I really need to because it's min-maxing the gold that you get. And uh, always be thinking about that. Always be thinking, if you're not 100% you're going to get that kill, minions are gold. Guaranteed income. That's why they're very, very good. So Darius is going to push it. I presume he's going to go want to buy because he's relatively low health. Again, you don't want to get caught out just being like kind of low. Uh, but you can see at the top, it's pretty close on gold. Okay, he's just going to use the plot. That's that's fine. Um, it's pretty close on gold. 300 gold lead for my team, which means that somebody's got a big advantage on the enemy team, which I think is the Akali. And then also bot lane is also really low, and she gets killed. Not good. Um, I don't actually know how a Caitlyn would have died then. Sona gets one kill on Sraka. Vayne's probably actually going to die. Would not surprise me if a minion, or even if uh, Sona gets this kill. Akali gets another kill somewhere on the volley bear. Again, I'm expecting the Akali to basically go legendary. Um, it's a weird thing that, again, people in lower ranking, I guess, don't really know. Oh, dear. Don't really know how to deal with Akali. Um, if you're trying to fight her in a 1v1 without CC, yes, she's probably going to kill you. That's what you don't do. Uh, so Darius is going for another 2v1. It's like a re literally a replay of what happened about, you know, three minutes ago. He's going to go for an E, not there. Uh, now she's there. It's like ring a ring a rosy. Now, okay, here's the problem. Okay, so decision making take two. So before the decision making of Darius going for the invade was questionable. Like a lot of people go, "Hi, you got a double kill." It's not questionable. It was like for the zero vision being able to get two v one. It was just bad play that gave Darius the double kill. You're doing the exact same thing this time. Nasus is about here. Always come back this way. You've got the Akali that's coming and the Diana by yourself without any vision. This is potentially a flash away situation and run. But let's see how it plays out, everybody. So he's actually waiting. And 3v1, here we go. This is where you flash, you run away and flash. And just takes the death. So again, decision making isn't quite there yet. Again, I know this is very low bronze. And that's probably the biggest thing that is kind of weird in lower rankings. Is a lot of time mechanically people aren't terrible. Um, but it's decision making. It's why you go in. What are you building? How much damage you do? Blah, blah, blah. So a lot of that is obviously the case. And just to remind everybody, the average rating of League of Legends is silver four. So if you're in bronze five, bronze four, bronze three, you are vastly below average. So whenever I've had messages from people in bronze five going, they deserve to be higher. You truly don't because an average player is silver four. So if you are, if you are above average, you'd really be able to easily climb in low bronze. Uh, so anyway, they're going for a kill on the Nasus. Nice free kill. Good aggressive flash. Don't really know why the Nasus didn't flash away. If, if that is correct, he does have flash up. So he potentially could have looked to get away, but just didn't really attempt to. 
what I'd want to see from my team is either go for Rift Herald or just push for this tower. First Blood Tower has not been taken anywhere yet, obviously. Uh, and, well, doing the Rift Herald with vision, active vision for the enemy team, I'd say is a little bit too risky. Uh, what I'd want again now is I don't really know what this invade is, but I'd want to see pressure on towers. Okay, so we would want to see a W potentially from Zig, so not, nothing, never mind. But I'd say for a Bronze 5, Bronze 4, Bronze 3 type game, I'm actually a little bit impressed with the last hits. Okay, so Akali decides to just go all in. Random Soraka ultimate, and I don't know why. Maybe she just wanted an assist or something? Um, but yeah, the last hits aren't that bad. When you actually look at it, 11, 11 and a half minutes, 70 CS for mid laners, 70 CS for Darius. Obviously, the NAS is a struggle, and bot lanes obviously is not done great. But I, you know, I, when you think of like Bronze 5, and there are Bronze 5 people in this game, nice shutdown from the Ziggs there. I would expect people don't even know what last hits are. Like, again, maybe that's offensive to Bronze 5 people, but truly, I think that's the stereotype for like very low rated people. And yeah, it's, it's better than I thought. So they're now doing a good thing. They're going for First Blood Tower. Now, what I would want to see, again, I know this isn't specifically just Darius, but when you're talking about, like, ranking up, this is what some people don't get. It's like, oh, you're saying this general stuff, but that doesn't really go to this Darius. It does, because the Darius can make decisions. The Darius can force plays. So what I'd want to see is them go here, and then what I'd want is the Darius to lead them to the dragon and do infernal that's what i would think would be very good you'd get a crazy amount of gold a very nice lead with infernal so that's what i'm hoping so let's see if it happens so they get the infernal i don't get the continue of pushing but they might actually get the, the diana they do a very messy kill actually she goes down as well very messy a bit clunky a kill's a kill, but again, what you're looking at is trying to maximize what you get for your team. And one kill on Diana with also dying, comparing to getting the Infernal. Infernal's ten times better. Anyway, range advantage from Caitlyn is still kind of reigning supreme. So what it does look like what's happened in bot lane is in all-in fights, the Vayne has won the all-ins. But in general lane phase, the Caitlyn's wrecking because of the range. And that's kind of standard, to be honest. Uh, let's actually just quickly get rid of the chat because it's a little bit distracting. Sona is in a 2v1 but does okay. Meanwhile, these guys are just tanking minions. Darius returning to the top lane with more components, which is great. Akali, you have vision of. They should be running as quick as they can. They should be completely fine. And uh, yeah, this game is not going bad. Really for either team. Like again, some people say, oh, this game's over. And if it was Diamond, I'd probably say this game is looking pretty easy for my team to win. They've got the fundamentals in place. They've got pressure. They've got like a Darius that's snowballing comparing to a NASA's. But this game isn't over by any means. Like this game could go either way. Uh, bit messy. Vayne, I don't even think moved to dodge that. I think that just randomly hit the Vayne there. But uh, not bad play, I guess, from the Vayne. Nice looking for a kill there. Darius returns the top lane. Let's see how it goes with a completed Triforce. Comparing to a NASA's that I believe is building Gauntlet. I don't know if Darius is going to get this kill. Nope, but good good pressure at least. Ziggs is getting engaged on by the Akali. Probably going to get ended up one shot. Yep. In that matchup, so Ziggs' items, what would I do differently? I'd have a Lich Bane rush. So why would you do Lich Bane rush? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, you're against a melee champion. Two, you can constantly auto-attack her and look for burst rather than the Morello. So Darius and Volibear, if you look at the minimap, are both looking for a flank right now to see if they can find Akali, which they do. Darius is just going to run under tower. I don't know if this is going to go very well because, the yeah... The longer that you're kind of hovering around here, the more time you're giving the enemy team. So again, the longer you're here, the more time you're giving the enemy team to adjust to what you're doing. So if Darius is now nearly half health by the tower, that gives Diana time to do something, but Volibear has found her. But because he's all by himself, I wouldn't expect if Akali actually roams down and kills him. But that also gives the Nasus time to come down as well. So if Darius does go for a dive on the Akali, one, it's not a guaranteed kill because she has a stealth. Secondly, because you've been here a while, I wouldn't be surprised if Nasus makes his way and gets an assist if you do end up dying. So let's, have, let's see how this plays out. So Volibear is going to go for a kill on the Diana, does end up getting the kill. Akali's over here, does roll Rotate. Darius is nearly dead. Probably will actually end up dying. Does die. Because he just took so much free damage from the tower. And because you've taken ages to do anything, 
Nasus has time to teleport, gets a kill, gets double buffs. That helps him out a lot. And that's all because of decision making. That That's all that was. That wasn't mechanic play. That was decision making play. The Darius randomly walking under tower, nearly dying from a tower. Tier 2 tower at 14 minutes. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I'm going to be honest. And they're just walking into an Akali, uh, giving her a free kill. So very questionable plays. Uh, Soda, and this is what I mean. This is what I absolutely hate seeing. And this is what you only basically see in supports in lower rank. This Sona has done nothing in this lane phase apart from sit either behind the Caitlyn or in a bush. You have no presence. Be aggressive. A, a Sona is designed to have sustain, but also to do damage. If a Sona, let's say, in this lane phase, in the past one minute, got a couple of Qs off and a couple of power cord auto attacks on this Soraka, one, she'd either be dead, or two, she would go back and buy, thus giving you a further XP lead. But because Sona hasn't been looking for any of this stuff, they're allowed to stay in lane. Always be looking for pressure, never be that support that just is kind of like, I just have to press a couple buttons, heal a couple people, wait in a bush and ward. No, you actually have to have pressure. You have to have pressure. Again, one big thing that we noticed the last time we did a bronze game and we looked at support is the sight stones differences. Thankfully, Soraka has sight stone. No sight stone yet on Sona. So we'll see. Again, sight stone. I'm saying it to you guys right now. If you're a support, 100% of the time. I, not even, oh, but that one time. No, 100% of the time you need sight stone. 110%. It's not an excuse not to build it. Let's continue. But look, she could be walking up, looking for a power. Like right now, walk up. Walk, it's free damage. Walk up. If Sona actually was paying attention, I'm going to say if, if she might be AFK right now for all I know. If she walked up, used ultimate, and queued, both are dead. Both of them are dead. But just nothing is going on with that Sona. And again, I know it's like Bronze 5, but that's not an excuse to basically be playing AFK. And now she wakes up. Weird. Darius going for a TP on the top tower to save the tower's health. I potentially, because it's already under the tower, I potentially would have gone down, done Inferno with it, Volibet, and then just use Teleport, go back up to top lane. Again, you're looking to snowball this game, and Infernal is a big thing of doing that. Obviously, Volibear should be able to solo this, but, it, you know, it's just extra pressure. It's extra people around. There. Uh, they got vision there. Ziggs is going to go over and help. Darius is looking for more pressure on the Nasus. If he can kill him and get the double buffs, that would be great. Good use of Q there. Uh, e, I think, might have been up, so that could have potentially been a chance. Akali and bot lane. So now these two should rotate. Ziggs is going to mid lane when he really should be rotating to bot lane. Still hasn't copped on yet. Volibear, I think he should probably not go for this. And yeah, I think both of them were dead. Oh, nice kill. That's the Soraka's fault in a weird way there. By healing, she lost more health. I don't know if she would have survived, but it would have been close. Okay, Volibear potentially is going to die. Yeah. They're not respecting the Akali is the problem this game. Uh, I think Ziggs actually might be dead as well. Now, a lot of people are going to watch this and go, look how OP Akali is. No, it's just lack of control. That's all it is. It's lack of control of and understanding of how to beat an Akali. Um, all you got to do is group, CC, uh, build the right item, like Morella Nomicon is not really going to do a lot of versus an Akali. What I'd want from Darius is not just randomly sit here. I'd want him to continue pushing top lane or push mid lane, actually do some pressure. Killing this crab is no pressure compared to actually doing stuff in the lanes, especially when your tower is still up. So that's probably what I'd want to see from him. But let's speed up the game. He's going to go for a back. So item build wise next, I'd probably go something a bit tankier. He goes to the Mercs, which is completely fine. But something a bit tanky, a bit beefy that will allow him to be in the middle of team fights, basically. Uh, because the, Akal the Akali is getting out of control, which I did kind of predict. Again, I haven't mentioned it, 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 mentioned it yet this episode, but I have never watched these replays before. I tell my people to never tell me anything about the game. Boom, that's a dead Nasus. He should have ulted a lot sooner. He would have gained the health. Akali gets another kill on the Ziggs. Now... I do think this game potentially is going to be a win for my team when they decide to group. But it's not 100%. Like, they do have a good Darius. Like, they've got a fed Darius. They're going for the tower, which is great. But if they can't control the Akali, if she's allowed to get to the back lane, back li uh, line, kill the Sona, kill the Caitlyn, you're not going to win this game. 
But if you actually work as a team, you group, you have traps, there's not a lot the Akali can do. Like, they're actually going for a four-man tower dive, one-shot the Sona. Caitlyn keep auto-attacking. She actually cancelled an auto-attack there, but that should be a dead Diana. It is. She should just be placing traps whenever she can and auto-attacking the minions. Right, so stay near the tower. It's your best chance of getting anything, but she just gets one shot by the Akali. Meanwhile, at top lane, though, they are having further pressure. Nasus is going ham. Darius, no mana. They have to back off. So again, this game is just a little bit messy. And what I'd say from the Volley Bear, yes, he's had a weird performance. He's half CS of the Diana. He's uh, one and four. Is prioritize the lanes that actually need help. Darius doesn't need help this game. He's done fine by himself. Uh, bot lane and mid arguably need the most help. Now, you can see that a lot of people are going to look for the zigs and go, damn, you know, he's not doing that bad. He's 3-3. Three, three. Always look to be comparing yourself to your lane opponent. So the Ziggs is 3-3, but his Akali is 11-1. So what does that mean? That means the Akali has had complete control over this game. Meanwhile, I think Sona, again, this Sona, I don't know if it's just me. Because, again, I haven't been watching Bronze people for a very long time. We've just started to do it again. I don't know if this Sona is half the time just either AFK, not looking at her screen... Or it's just lack of reaction. Because now we saw earlier that she could have ulted two people get two kills. But watch this. Walking back to lane. Walking back. Nothing, you know. Having a nice stroll in a park. You can see Akali for a couple of seconds before anything happens. Literally, you see her. Keeps walking in a straight line. Uses an ability. Doesn't use exhaust. Doesn't use ultimate. Nothing. What? Like, again, to me, it's really confusing. And I know to a lot of you guys watching, you're going to be like, what the hell's going on? Uh, but what I'd say, if you watch this and you are, well, meanwhile, Akali gets a dive, probably going to survive as well. If you are a bronze four, bronze five player, I have had conversations with people in this ranking. Weird flash by the Darius. They might actually be able to do quite a lot here, though, to be honest. Too early of an ultimate, but they do end up getting the kill. Keep auto-attacking Darius. Keep auto-attacking. Should be auto-attacking the vein. Another good kill. Might be able to get the Soraka because you probably are a little bit quicker. Or too early. If you use Q now, she was dead. And nice. Triple kill from Darius. Really nice play. But if you are a Bronze 5, Bronze 4 type player. And you are somebody that thinks you should be climbing. There is no excuse not to climb. What are you doing? There is no excuse not to climb if you're in Bronze 4, Bronze 5. When you're looking at these games. It takes one person to carry a game. Darius is going for a teleport and no health. Well, I don't know what that teleport was, I'm going to be honest. So that, again, is decision making. The, the, the lack of decision making in this game, you know, this is decision. Look, again, I say to you guys, I'm not here to poke fun. I'm here just to say how it is. This is how it is. There is no decision making happening in this game. It does not exist. Uh, all right, so Darius is a little bit low. Probably is going to be okay, though, I would think. Oh, no, he does go down. Caitlyn's doing basically no damage. Diana comes up for the Caitlyn. She is going to die. There was no point flashing that. But like my point I was trying to finish is if you are Bronze 4, Bronze 5, etc. I've had messages from people who are going, I'm Bronze 5, but I should be Gold. No, you should be Bronze 5 because there is no excuse to carry these type of games. And some people say, oh, this is just an awful example. No, this is now the second game that we've had around this rating. They've both been the exact same. Like this is this rating. So if you do truly desire to be higher, you will get higher. Look at the Akali. She's carrying. She's 14-3. And arguably, by not even playing that good. Because if she was truly doing really well, her last hits would easily, easily be 130, 140 last hits, having even more gold. So there's a lot to improve here. And even, even to a lot to improve, she's still 14 kills, 3 deaths at 21 minutes. So this is my point. And this is why the ranking system is a true display of skill. Like Ezreal says. A lot of people, the only people that don't think rating is a big indicator is generally the lower rated people. So what I'd want from my team moving onward, like the, the Darius, etc. Basically teamwork. Uh, that should be a kill for Darius. Q and then ultimate. Bang and then ult. She's dead anyway with the dot. Um, so it's just teamwork. Look to group. Identify that the enemy team is looking for picks as you as solos. This actually might not go terrible. Get the Q off. Get the heal. Go for the kill. It does go down, but it's okay. They should actually pick up the Soraka as well, to be honest. Uh, what I'd want from Caitlyn. Uh, just back off. So identify. Basically, no matter what rating it is, you can always identify that the enemy team has 
two major assassins in it, Diana and Akali, and one AD carry that is known to go against people in 1v1s, the Vayne. So what do you do? Two assassins, AD carry that likes to 1v1 people, don't give them those 1v1s. Group, go as five. Even a Nasus doesn't like grouping, he likes to split push. So the enemy team hate grouping. My team, Darius, Volibear, Ziggs, Sona. Four champions that are amazing at team fighting. So that's just the basic, basic way of just saying in your own head, we should be grouping. Because now Akali gets a solo kill by herself. Now Volibear's alone. Volibear will probably go down as well. All because you're basically playing into the enemy's hands. So all I'd want to see is people to start grouping. Very simple. It's not a not a complicated mechanic. Hell, I say it in 90% of my commentaries. One of the biggest lessons of the game is simply group. Um, so yeah. So how is this game going to go moving forward? So I'm going to anticipate there's probably another five potential well 10 minutes left of this game again i'm not 100 percent sure i don't actually know that's what i would guess because my team is now looking to group caitlin's also coming mid and it'll be interesting to see where darius goes so darius is going top lane but the rest of the team is looking around mid lane potentially they can go get a kill on nasus and then look to group um but let's see how it goes so nasus is overextending there's no reason for him to be here anymore he probably is going to die now, the good thing is you have Vision of Akali, so you know where she is. There's the Nasus. Does get ulted. Don't know if the ultimate was needed, I'm going to be honest. And the exhaust was 100% not needed. And that's, again, this Sona... I don't know what to say about the Sona. Like, this is just probably a Bronze 5 player that will stay Bronze 5 for a long, long time. Which, again, there's nothing wrong with that if you're not taking League that seriously. Oh, here we go. Double pick coming up. This is where the Sona ultimate and exhaust would have been a lot more useful. Where's auto attacks from Caitlyn? Boom. Oh, that got cancelled. Boom, double kill. So that's the Darius team fighting I'm talking about. And like, if we had Sonar ultimate that she didn't need to use on Nasus, and Exhaust that she didn't need to use on Nasus, that was a double kill for free that I don't even think people would have died. Volibear holding bot lane alone has to be very, very careful at the moment because if Vayne decides to go for a stun play on him with the Soraka healing, he might die and she might live. So here we go. This one, I'm talking about a stun play. Oh... With the Soraka healing, she is going to die because of minion block. Kind of worth it. You stop them pushing, you kill their AD carry. But I'd still want to see grouping happening. You know, that, that's, that's what I want to see this game. Uh, item builds, we haven't really talked about this game. So Darius getting the red, I think, is perfectly fine. He is definitely the carry of this game for my team. So he's gone Triforce into Deadmans with Merc Treads. It's a fine standard Darius item build. What I would say, though, is why Deadman when you're looking at the enemy team is the fed person the akali with also diana one-shotting people and you haven't even well you fought vein a little bit but not mainly where's mr so that that's what i'd say is the next step for the starry to build some magic resist make sure that you can't get bursted by the akali uh what i'd want to see from the zigs is that lich bane what i'd want to see from that caitlin is probably like a rapid fire to increase your range because you don't want to go anywhere near an akali or that so if you get rapid fire cannon increase your range then they can't get to you it's harder. So he actually goes for GA as third item. I don't think that's a bad idea because again, there's a very fed people. It, it kind of enables you to go ham in team fights and also deters people from even attacking you in the first place because they'd probably be like, oh, Darius has got GA. There's no point killing him. He's just going to come back alive. But I'd still kind of want to see a bit of magic resist. Okay, so potentially a team fight happening. Darius running straight into the Akali. Potentially could have saved the E again. Only use it if you know where people are. And you didn't have vision of that bush. Uh, they might be able to get a pick on somebody. Volibear could be running. Sonar ultimate. Good Sonar ultimate. There we go. That's what I like to see. Da Volibear going for a Q. Probably going to get the alley up. Gets the slow, which is great. Darius gets the E. Probably would want people to be focusing the assassins, though. So there is a dead Diana. Akali in the middle of the team fight. Like I mentioned to you guys. Makes a use of Makes them not do anything. And they win the team fight. And what I'd be asking right now. Where's Nasus? What's he doing? He's not even pushing. So we have no idea where the dog is. He wasn't in that team fight. And not even pushing anywhere. It's like... Mm. So it's a good thing for my team. Get a good team fight one. And also get a few kills on the board. Which is great. Um, what may... Well, like, again, the, the build from Ziggs. Again, I do want to see Lich Bane. But potentially a Zonyas could work for this Ziggs. Because when Akali is jumping on you... And there's the dog. 
Uh, when Akali's jumping on you when you're in the middle of a team fight, yes, she can one-shot you. Oh, the TP usage isn't good this game. Uh, she can one-shot you, but um, if you Zonya's it, then she can't attack you for that period of time. So what I'd say, again, specifically for this Darius, is the TP usage has not been good this game. A lot of it has been teleporting into random places that you don't need to go. Remember the one that he was basically zero health and teleported here? And then another one to that one? Your teleport, but basically just to understand what teleport is for. Teleport is for pressure. It's purely for pressure. Early game, it's about getting pressure by using gold and buying and then coming back to lane early uh, without getting punished. They have to be very careful here. Um, again, no reason to be there, really. Good Sonar ultimate, though. They probably are going to get out alive, which is great. Um, but in late game, it's all about pressure. Having split push pressure as a top laner and then pushing it, making a minion wave push, say, like down here, teleporting them to go help your team. Akali's by herself. This is a free kill right now. Auto attack, auto attack. Auto attack does get one shot, but does go down. Darius is basically just going to be free, auto attacking everything. Be careful of the Diana. She does go down as well. And also there's a kill on Soraka. So that's just nice. Shame that Akali does get another kill. Volibear is going to go for the Nasus. Probably will be able to get him. He does have flash up, but I don't even know if it's going to help him because they flash and there's teammates around. Meanwhile, Vayne now in the bot lane doing nothing by herself. So this is just one of these games that there's just not a lot of thought process happening. What I want for my team right now is Baron. It's a free Baron right now. You've got four people who do decent damage with Caitlyn spawning in 10 seconds who could take care of this. They don't go for it, which I think is a mistake, but that's just the way that it goes. So it's just like a very bare bones primal game of League of Legends that people just do stuff instinctually without even thinking. And that leads to mistakes. That leads to just weird play in general. Now, Vayne is maybe going to get caught. Doesn't actually, though. Darry should look to clear that minion wave so the tower doesn't die. And uh, voila, Volibear stays top lane, Zig stays mid lane for some reason. He has got caught out a lot in a 1v1 with this Akali now, and he's not respecting it. You've got to respect a 21 kill Akali, but the same way that they have to respect a 15 kill Darius. Randomly, she queues into the Darius. What I'd want to see, though, was a W before the Q. You do get the flash, which is good, and a mistake by them. Caitlyn is now by herself once again. Darius might end up getting a kill or two here. Akali doesn't understand that Darius still has vision of her. Darius might go for a many, many kills here, potentially, if Sona backs him up. Boom. Boom. Potentially could have uh, ulted. Gets a quadra kill. Potentially could have ulted a little bit uh, or, uh, uh, later. But this actually might be a penna kill. Volibear, meanwhile, by the way, is still pushing in top lane. Darius is gonna... Oh! Get a... Potential... Oh... Maybe not. So Sona doesn't want to take it. Let's see what happens. The dead man is helping him speed up. Where's the E? There's the E. There's the Q. Pentakill, baby. So there we go. You can guess why Solo Beverly wanted me to talk about this episode now. But that's a good Pentakill. That's a Darius showing his strength. And that's basically the opposite of what we've seen in this game. So this game has basically been my team not controlling the Akali well. Not grouping. Not using CC to chain CC just to kill her really quickly. But the same's happened on the enemy team. This is an enemy team that isn't dealing with the Darius. That's letting him collect stacks on people to let him ultimate. So it's like, it's weird. We've got like a, a reverse. Both teams are making the same mistakes. Which team is going to win? Well, we'll find out soon. I am going to guess it's my team. Because again, like I mentioned to you guys, my team is even stronger than them in a grouping situation. Let alone a like split situation. My guess would be a dead uh, Sona over here. Okay, hit some spells. Sona, just do some damage. So that's, again, like I'm talking about you guys, no control over the Akali. It opens the game up, lets Akali get a kill on Ziggs. Item build for Ziggs as well was a little bit questionable. Darius is going to go for a bit of an ag aggressive play while he picks up the kill. Really good E by Darius. Caitlyn's going to continue auto attack what she is doing. Q and then auto attack and then ult, I mean, ulted the wrong target by mistake. That was a dead Susan or Nasus if he did end up ulting the wrong target. Yeah, very messy game, but I think it's going to be a victory. So let's speed up the footage. Oh, the teleports are driving me mad. Why are you teleporting from there to there when you're already pushing? No reason. <laughs> so Solo Beverly in particular, I know you'll be watching this, obviously. Don't teleport randomly like that. Your team would have got the tower anyway. And by the time that your team would have got the tower, you can just walk down. You don't lose anything. Your teleport will still be up, which is good. So uh, be very careful for that type of thing. 
Ooh, has to be careful under the tower there. Looking for potentially anything. Should just be attacking the minions right now and then looking to attack the tower. Both lanes, just to point out, before this happens, minions are there, minions are there, so you have open freedom to do this. Darius gets a successful E on the vein, so let's see how this goes. Vayne use heal, Darius is alone, gets CC, so that's now the enemy team. They are controlling the Darius. Now this will let an Akali pop off. Seeder, they should be attacking. Where's the damage from Caitlyn coming out? No damage coming out from Caitlyn. There's the ultimate, does get the kill eventually need to get those auto attacks in more auto attacks double auto attacks that was a dead diana if you kept auto attacking wanna get maximum damage as much as you possibly can and that is auto attacking as an ad carry ziggs comes over here for a little bit of pressure they should just do one auto attack right now the caitlin should just auto attack it boom dead tower Whew. this game Okay, now they're working on the inhibitor. You've got two people coming up in 10 seconds, but the people that are alive, you don't really have to worry. She walks directly on the trap. One more auto attack. She had one more auto attack there. That was a dead Diana, but she cancelled the auto attack or didn't even look for it. And now they should just decide to back off. So they go back and buy, use their gold, group as five people, go to the opposite tower to where you have super minions coming in. There'll be nothing the enemy team can do, and that should be GG. So let's just continue watching it. And see how this goes. So item build just to save for Darius now. Build the Abyssal Mask which is really good. It's a good item to have. Deals with the AP of the enemy team quite well. And also is helping your team. So it's like a great item in this situation. Meanwhile the team is going to do the dragon. So what I want to see is them do the dragon. Go back and buy instantly. And I do mean instantly. And then all go to top lane. Because you want to keep up this pressure. Like randomly... Them delaying it and slowing the game down is not what you want to do when you're ahead. You want you want to end the game as quick as you possibly can when you've got a lead like this. Bolly Bear by himself. I think he'll be okay. So Darius has got the right idea being top lane. Bolly Bear hopefully will join him pretty soon. And now my team should make their way over here. Very simple. So again, when you have open super minions going here, one, you guarantee one of two things. First thing is there's probably going to be someone down here clearing the super minions. Two, if no one is clearing the super minions because they're trying to hold you off here, that means that super minions are going to be making their way into the base. Thirdly, let me just quickly explain. These two are doing the correct thing. Why is the enemy team here? There is no reason for the enemy team to be here because a Ziggs and a Caitlyn should easily be able to clean this and just stop the enemy team. Even if it takes Ziggs ultimate to stop it, and they're just losing their base. So let's see how this goes. Uh, Darius, I think, flashed on the Nasus. They did use Ziggs ultimate to clear it, which is good. They're going for a kill on the Nasus. Boom. Now go for the inhibitor. My team now should be chasing these guys to stop them basing. That's a free inhibitor. And also pressure in mid lane or anti-pressure in mid lane. So now you've got two mini uh, two uh, inhibitors. They have to be pretty careful about this type of play. Misty, unfortunately. They should actually still get this kill on Vayne, though. She does use Flash. Might still go down. No, she doesn't. Uh, Akali does get a free kill onto the uh, Caitlyn. Probably, again, by lack of control. These two big bruisers are just taking over the enemy base. And there's nothing that the enemy team could do about it. So I don't really know what the, the rest of the team is really doing. Not really anything. But they get three inhibitors. Darius has to be careful by actually getting killed, which he does. Volley Bear is going for a very greedy play on a Soraka. That's not that important. Darius is going to get chain CC to death, which is a little bit messy. They've got to be careful that they don't actually get killed here. Sona does not have ultimate. Let's see how this game this goes. Need a lot of damage coming out by the Ziggs right now. Keep auto attacking. Keep doing damage. And you should be completely fine because of how tanky the Volley Bear is. And that's an ace. And that probably is the game. So very messy. The biggest thing you can take out this game is value, decision making, decision making, decision making. The teleports from Darius were a little bit weird. The reasonings why he was walking into the jungle was weird. That Yes, they worked out for him, but they were weird. And yeah, just the general play obviously was quite low, but that's just the way that's going to be. So what I'd say specifically for Solo, Solo Beverly, you did well. It was good, but just be careful on the decision making. Like It, it could have gone a lot better. And obviously, you've had two situations in this game, is that my team 
controlled the Akali poorly, enemy team controlled the Darius poorly, and luckily for us, the Darius had a bigger impact in late game than an Akali when people were grouping or pushing towers. So that works out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did enjoy this and you like this series, throw a like on the video. Uh, remember that the, you have to be a tier 3 Twitch subscriber or the Patreon, which I think is sold out at the moment, to be in this series. Please don't email my business email. I literally delete them instantly because it's not it's not what you do. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. There will be more of a variety of ratings. I think next episode is a diamond episode, if memory serves correct, uh, when, I, when I've already got the replay ready to go. Uh, that's it. So like the video, subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye.